The year is 1992. I was 18 years old. I graduated from high school and my time at the company Sunken Treasure Incorporated had come to an end where I worked in the capacity of professional artist working on a comic book. And I wanted to continue that career. So now I needed to break into the industry and I got so many rejection letters from the larger companies like Marvel and DC and Image and Dark Horse and what have you, I was now looking for small companies featuring artwork of equality that I consider to be lesser than what I was capable of. One of those comics I found was the saga of Original Man from Omega 7 Comics and publisher writer Alonzo Washington. Alonzo Washington was a civil rights activist and crime victims advocate based in Kansas City, Missouri. This comic had a print run of 17,000 copies, and it is made up of reprint material from Original Man, issues 0, 1, and 2. Now, issue 1 was a black and white comic in which uh, artist-writer Tony Joppa says he created the character in 1987, and he's the writer-artist of that issue, along with publisher-co-writer Alonzo Washington. Original man arrives from the future into present day, 1992, Kansas City, Missouri, and he stops crimes. He's uh, stopping gang fights. He's traveled back in time following an evil alien race that has also traveled back in time. They're called the Cool, K-H-U-L. And uh, there's a cameo appearance by this character, Dark Force. It, it, the story continues in issue two, another black and white comic. This one's dated September of 1992. Again, Tony Joppa, writer-artist, Alonzo Washington, publisher-co-writer. There's more battles. There's the Rodney King riots. And uh, Dark Force enters the story in a, in, a, in a bigger capacity. So does a character named Original Woman. After this, I believe, is when the prequel comic, issue zero, came out. This is a color comic, and it is not Tony Joppa anymore. It is now artist Christopher Higginson. And it shows uh, a story taking place in the year 8992, where Earth is the capital of an interstellar federation with President Luxor in charge, who rose to power after single-handedly ending a 300-year-long war with an alien race called the Cryogians under his superhero name, Original Man. Well, now the Cryogians have escaped their prison and they've begun a new war. And Original Man, he's older. He wants to pass the mantle of his powers on to his son, Michael. M-I-K-A-L. Michael also has powers. He has a super suit. He immediately goes to battle with the Cryogians and during which the father dies. At that point, um, as told on the inside cover here... Alonzo Washington breaks ties with the comic group collective called the ANIA, which is talked about in Wizard Issue 18 on page 8. It's basically uh, black comic book creators and publishers creating black characters with black interests for a black audience. Alonzo Washington has severed ties with them because uh, he says that they consider him to be too black. And he's cut ties with Tony Joppa because uh, Tony Joppa is staying with the ANIA and trying to continue creating merchandise and what have you with his character, Original Man. But Alonzo Washington feels he, I guess, somehow has part ownership of the character because he was the publisher. Actually, he says the reason why he deserves to have a cut is because if it wasn't for him, no one would even know that Tony Joppa exists. So we get this comic, which uh, Alonzo took a couple pages from each of the previous three issues. He colors them all or has them colored very horribly. And some of the art is great, but that's because they're copied from professional comic books. This stuff is clearly not copied. This is the horrible amateur hour stuff. Look at this. It's like kindergarten stuff. This is terrible. So anyways, that's you get this collection. Uh, Alonzo Washington is just going to forge ahead. And uh, he, he couldn't keep this character because even though he feels it's his, it's not. So he changes the character's name to Omega Man and comes out with a few more issues. That's collected into a trade paperback. He continues with his character, Original Woman. He creates a character, Original Boy. He even puts out an original... Er, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're all renamed Omega. Sorry. So he even puts out an Omega Man action figure, but the artwork on the action figure 
figure is of original man. They're, they're basically identical. I guess if it had made any money, he would be sued talking about making any money. Look these comics up on eBay. Okay, so the saga of Original Man, you can find these. They're like from $25 to $100 a piece for this horrible comic book. But if and when you can find the actual issue 0, 1, and 2, they are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Same with this, Dark Force. There's two issues of Dark Force. Issue one, it's like $150. I happened to get lucky and find one pretty cheap. Never saw a cheap one again. Issue two is even more expensive. So it's black and white inside, Dark Force. This is another character. But it's also got Original Man in here. Well, if you look at the saga of Original Man, it's a flip book. You flip it over and it's Dark Force issue zero and you get a four-page Dark Force story. And this is written by Alonzo Washington, but it's drawn by a guy named Palmer Talley. But if you look at the cover, it's signed Palmer 84. So was this artwork created in 1984 and then here in 1992, Alonzo Washington publishes it and decides it's now his character as well? I don't know the backstory behind all of this. It doesn't really matter. It's all garbage. But it's ridiculously expensive garbage. So, you know what? I need to start reading some quality comics and make, <laughs> make videos about them. Sorry. See you next time.